In the 19th century, Helston was a town of assured importance and one of the most populous towns in the hundred of Penwith, its wealth evident in its fine Georgian and Victorian architecture. Number 56 Coinage Hall Street is a substantial townhouse situated in one of Helston's main thoroughfares. In the early 1850s, this house became the home of one of Helston's most infamous characters, the woman known far and wide as the Witch of the West, Tammy Blee. Thomasine Tammy Williams was christened at Gwenup Church near Redruth on the 4th of August 1793. Little is known of her childhood, but the surrounding parish is situated in the centre of the mining district, with more deep mines than any other part of Cornwall. Her father, James, worked underground, and Tammy grew up to know poverty and hardship. According to records, her mother, whose name was also Thomasine, sought relief from the parish on a number of occasions. By 1830, then in her late twenties, Tammy had married Richard Bly, a stonemason, and borne him three children. Only one child, a son christened William, survived beyond childhood. Cholera and typhoid epidemics periodically swept the duchy, and in 1832, Richard Bly contracted and died of typhus. It was about this time that Tammy Bly, or Tammy Blee, as she commonly became known, began to practice as a conjurer. For centuries, across races and creeds, a similar term was used to describe cunning folk, the wise ones, those who were practised in the supernatural arts. The cunning folk, the white witches or pellars to use the Cornish term, were widely consulted and could provide a range of services from lifting curses and undoing the malficia of other witches to offering cures, charms and divination. If you had to make a choice, it would be wise woman. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. As I found out for myself when I became a wise woman eventually, um, the, the witch appellation is, is more sensationalist and it's what the general person who knows no better will call someone that does that sort of work. Um, a pella is very specific and usually you find particularly in Cornwall is specific to families and qualities and skills. So it could be specific to say walk charming or um, bone setting, wise woman, you're like a GP, you have, have to be able to um, put your hand to anything, depending on what your clients want. And certain, certainly as I'm working as a wise woman, I find that it sounds from the type of work she did, I would call her a wise woman. I'm, I'm a great believer in mind over matter, uh, particularly when it comes to physical ailments. So if someone is convinced that I only got to wave my arms around in a certain way or say the right words and they will be better, they will be because their mind has made up that way in the same way as it can work in reverse. In December 1835, the widowed Tammy Bly married once again. James Thomas, 21 years her younger, also claimed occult powers and together they set up business in Back Lane, Red Ruth. A contemporary account provides a fascinating insight into Tammy's popularity and her powers. In consequence of various troubles and losses, I trudged to Red Ruth to consult Tammy Blee. I had to wait in a lower room from morning to dusk before my turn came, so many were the applicants for the results of her supernatural wisdom. On being admitted, she said, I know what you have come about, and then told me my initials, my wife's and son's, that I was a parish officer, and that I had Livestock Hill, which she described minutely and correctly. The accuracy of all her statements made my hair stand on end. She further explained that it was all the work of an ill-wisher. She guarded me from their power with a written paper hung around my neck, and for the cattle she gave me powders to be rubbed into their bodies. This have I done and find them already improving. I as much believe in the power of the old lady as in the truth of any of the Gospels. By 1841, her reputation had spread far and wide and she and James moved to the bustling town of Helston. 
Her powers now encompass divination, healing, distance healing, the removal of spells, herbal law and even necromancy. Though the renowned Cornish folklorist William Botterell's account of Tammy's attempt to raise the dead casts a shadow over some of her claims. A local old woman of moderate wealth had died without leaving a will, and a close relative, named as Robin, appealed to Tammy to raise the dead woman from a grave so that he might quiz her. The wise woman advised, You must know that it is a dreadful thing to undertake. A few days later, as nightfall descended, Tammy arrived with Robin at the graveside and began to summon the spirit. Botterell described the scene. The witch stretching out her arms, her red cloak and grey hair streaming back in the wind, pointed with her staff towards the place where these frightful sounds proceeded and said, Behold, it cometh, be thou prepared. A hideous figure in a shroud appeared, which so threatened the relative that he struck out and was astounded when the ghostly figure fell to the ground and bereft of its shroud was revealed to be James Thomas. Tammy's husband. The couple begged the relative not to reveal their scheme but suggested that he tell his friends and family that the dead woman had indeed been raised and sought repayment for her kindnesses in life. This he agreed and within days the story of the knight's necromancy was the talk of the neighbourhood. Shortly Robin was surprised to find sums of money being deposited outside his house from people who had borrowed from the dead woman in her past. Botterell's story tells us that a few months afterwards when repair work was being done to the dead woman's cottage, the will and some treasure were found hidden in the thatch. Thomasine Bly, Tammy Blee, died at her house in Coinage Hall Street on the 6th of October 1856 and was buried in the churchyard of Helston Parish Church a few days later. On the day of her interment, the sky darkened and a huge storm swept across Cornwall, causing devastating floods and damage. Local legend has it that it was a salute from the devil to the late witch of Helston. Her last resting place is unmarked and forgotten, the ways of the cunning folk superseded by modern medicine. But a century and a half later, the skills, folk remedies and holistic cures of the wise woman that held sway for generations are now being reassessed and Tammy Blee's reputation as one of the most gifted wise women in the West is again being recognised.